Hello, fellow StarCraft II nerds. The Terran salute and sign of respect because you do not play Protoss. Zerg, eh. Zerg is okay, but Protoss. We all know. We all know that I can go there, but I won't. I'm going to be professional. Anyways, welcome to the second episode of the second season of the GM Terran web series. I know, I know. That name, so original. TM and R, trademark and registered. So, <clears throat> this season, I'm going to be focusing on doing a lot of different kinds of, more different kinds of analysis. What I'm going to be doing and what I've started to do, you could see that in the last episode, I went over one of Innovation's games that he played on stream and I broke it down in English. So it's basically like Innovation playing and then Innovation explaining his thought process in my voice. <laughs> Maybe that's what he sounds like because we're both kind of Asian. <clears throat> so anyways, this game is going to be a TVT game. It's a marine tank versus marine tank game, and here we go. And the reason why I picked this is because someone, uh, someone posted and they asked, "Can you make a video about TVT?" I think it was a bit longer than that. He wanted to expl he wanted like more different builds and stuff. So I'm gonna start off with this game, and hopefully I'll be able to use a bunch of other TVTs that I find. It's going to be so much easier now because Innovation plays so much TVT on ladder, but we never see any TVT games ever televised. And this way, I won't have to put up with the annoying observers in tournament games that I always have to rely on. And we can see exactly what's going on through Innovation's point of view. So I think it'll also be a lot more beneficial to point out all the small things. Anyways, I digress. The opener that Innovation is currently doing is a Gas First and then Cloak Banshee opener. And he does it, he does it, it's a pretty normal build and then you transition into Marine Tank here, but he makes a couple of adjustments that allow him to take advantage of the positioning, both the positioning and the size of the map and what the opponent is doing. So that he modifies his build to make it a lot more efficient towards his, what his opponent is doing. So, first of all, we see a 16 scout. This is a four player map. You need to scout your opponent. But I would also suggest. Actually, no, never mind about. Well, actually, yeah. I would suggest uh, scouting at about the same time against or on a two player map too. I mean, it doesn't hurt because the main reason why you want to scout for that is because proxy marauders can do a lot of damage. You're going to be really weak right now with only single marines and single hellions slash widow mines and that doesn't really do well against marauders with concussive shells. If you get caught, you're a dead stalker. So if you can scout the proxy marauder rush in time, you, that, then you can kind of take precautionary measures such as adding a bunker or pulling out CVs and stopping the push before it gets too big but doing that kind of stuff and really being able to shut down the proxy marauder that's just my opinion it makes it safer for me and it makes it a lot easier to deal with and it's not really worth that much either like innovation he's still gonna lose his SCV but I would say the scouting information obtained from losing a single SCV is almost always worth it anyways the SEV sees a Reaper and a Hellion coming out. It's kind of a funky build, and I'm going to point out what this enemy Terran player does that I think is really cool. I'm pretty sure that's a Reaper. I'm pretty sure that's a Reaper, which is kind of weird to lose that first Reaper. But we're, we're just going to ignore that, pretend it didn't happen. So the thing I find cool with what the other Terran player does is he pops up the Reaper onto the high ground, and normally you're going to have two to three Marines ready to fight off that reaper but what he does is he uses the two hellions at the same time right now and he ends up killing two marines for a reaper not the best trade but i would say it could it could be you could have a lot more value off of it if you killed maybe one marine and you w were able to save your reaper or if you even have two reapers still i mean it can 
it can do a good amount of damage and pick off some units by utilizing the terrain of the map. And I thought that was really cool to see from that other Terran. Anyways, wow, I just caught myself saying anyways like four times in a row. Ooh, not going to say it this time. I need a different transitional word then. Hmm. Oh, I just want to say anyways and then move on, but I don't want to use anyways anymore. And I don't want to use so. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I will just continue on and pretend it didn't happen, I guess. <laughs> the Cloak Banshee of Innovation, it's able to get a couple free kills right here. One kill, two kill. I believe it gets three or four. That one SCV going down the ramp like that, I think that's an okay kill. But the three other SCV kills were a result of the turret being late, which should almost never happen, especially if you scout your opponent in time. And what Innovation's doing is he's t he knows that his opponent opened Reaper Hellion, so he's going to be safe against this kind of like Hellion harass because he has a Widow Mine and Marines out in the field, and it's cross position, so he's going to add a third command center pretty fast, and he's just scouted his opponent getting a an expansion as well. And these Banshees, they seem to be wasteful, but the second Banshee just obtained important scouting information, and Innovation's decision making in and his like reason for building these multiple banshees this is his third banshee and i believe he's going to build one more is he going to build one more anyways ooh just caught myself saying anyways again uh innovation he is getting multiple banshees because he knows his opponent got a raven and if you don't have a raven you're going to need to save up scans for detection so if you're not saving up scans you're going to be you're going to have to use a raven and that raven is not always in the best spot and the purpose of these banshees is to obtain scouting information pick off units and slow down the economy as much as possible by forcing scans and maybe being able to pick off scvs if he's lucky what we see innovation following up with here is what i think is a very standard build he's getting a very fast stim and what I like about this is he's going to be getting two medevacs before his siege tanks. Notice how it's almost 10 minutes into the game and Innovation hasn't built a single siege tank. Well part of the reason is because of what his of what he scouted his opponent doing. Uh, if we see here uh, he hasn't been making any siege tanks. The Banshees that have been harassing also have not seen any siege tanks as well. So Innovation knows that the siege tanks are going to be pretty delayed from his opponent but also he doesn't really need siege tanks at this point in the game either because he's going to be having so many banshees he's going to be applying a lot of pressure and if the other player chooses to move out then innovation can stall long enough to make siege tanks because they only take 45 seconds to build while doing a disgusting amount of counterattack damage with the banshees because if he put if the other turn player pushes out with a raven you're not going to have a raven at home and you're going to have very few units at home too to deal with the banshees and the turrets don't cover everything the turrets just give you a safe spot to hide your scvs but you can always pick off units when there's only one turret in the mineral line there's always going to be a soft spot and innovation he did it already in this game he, it was uh right over there but he found a soft spot and was able to get a couple scvs where the turret wasn't covering it and what he's doing here is he's trying to buy some time N not really working too well but he still so this is the kind of thing where if you don't have a siege tank these pushes become a lot harder to stop but we see innovation that's a good widow mine shot completely unnecessary lost by the other turn player uh but still, we see that the siege tanks have now sieged up. However, innovation does have stim. I don't. If you get the siege tanks really early, like the other Terran player did, he's not going to have stim. But innovation, he got stim before siege tanks, so he's going to have stim. And plus, innovation's playing super greedy too. So his he's not he doesn't have one one in this fight. But stim is enough, and the healing of the medevacs it really makes siege tanks a lot less effective. And so he's able to completely shut down this push and a reinforcement wave as well. That was a significant portion of the Terran player's army that he lost, and now he's very very far behind. 
And what Innovation does to press the advantage is, first he exerts map control, he takes the first watchtower, he's gonna, I think he's gonna leave a marine over there, and then he also takes another, he takes the other watchtower, and then he goes down this path, because the most common path that the Terran player is going to be defending is this area right there and this area right here. So going around this way will give Innovation the best, best kind of surprise and try to deal as much damage as possible. Because from here on now, Innovation has an advantage. He wants to snowball that advantage. And part of doing that is going out on the map and starting to do harassment we see innovation he's lining up a drop as well so he really just wants to poke at the Terran players defenses he doesn't even want to do damage he just wants to poke at the Terran defenses with a stick and kind of see where exactly the units are and so he sees some units at the third his drops gonna see where the units are or they're gonna not even see the units they're gonna force the units to go there to deal with it so the dropship's gonna force units to go into the main base to deal with it and Innovation's trading units here because he knows he's ahead. One thing that I noticed Innovation doing, he has like 100 plus energy on his first command center. He definitely has more than a mule saved up in his second. And in his third, he also has some energy saved up. So he has about three to four mules that are not mining right now, not even including saving up scans. So I think Innovation's just kind of getting tired right now, or it's a warm-up game or something. But his macro is not on, on top, or let's just keep it at that uh, innovation I also kind of missed it there but he left his units there for a reason to kind of force the other Terran player to bring his units to defend over there so it's it's a matter of not kind of it's mi not microing it's having good positioning and forcing your opponent to assume a certain position such as defending the third base and now the other Terran players siege tanks are over there it's just kind of like forcing him to do that and then knowing where his where his weak spots are going to be if he has units there then he is not going to have units here and once again innovation found a weak spot here and now he's just going to push it home he uses the siege tanks to give some defensive ground to the marines as the marines are the ones that poke out and do the little damage and kind of force the other terran player into an engagement and we see here innovation He's caught. He's sieged up in a very, very sick spot. Now all he has to do is rally his reinforcements. We already see he manually moved his some reinforcements over here in preparation for this attack. And now we see Innovation's reinforcements come, and the other Terran player has lost a lot of his army. In fact, he doesn't even have enough to keep those two siege tanks alive. They're all split up, and now this Terran player is going to fall apart, and Innovation's going to come out victorious on top of this in a dominating fashion that we are accustomed to seeing in his stream games and this all comes from a very very small advantage early on well not really very small it's it's an advantage it's not a small advantage it's not a big advantage it's an advantage that he has early on by destroying that army and he was able to clean it up so easily because he had stim he had auto turrets from the raven oh so he made three banshees and then a raven not uh, four banshees and then also he had stim and he had the marines to deal with the siege tanks and putting them in a nice arc I guess marines with stim beat two siege tanks see two siege tanks isn't a very big number I think three is where it starts to snowball out of control uh, but two siege tanks and a bunch of unstimmed marines from the other Terran player so that basically wraps up this video it's kind of a nice short one and innovation he's still able to take command of the game in an aggressive way even though he opened up extremely greedy I guess it's not completely greedy because he's just reacting to what he saw his opponent do and it's cross positions frost so it's very hard to push across that map the rush distance is very long but taking that third command center is a very acceptable way to kind of it's very acceptable as a result of seeing the fast natural command center so innovation would have been slightly behind eco economic wise but he edged out slightly ahead because of the faster third command center so yeah that pretty much wraps up today's video uh, once again it's TVT innovation style 
doing a very standard, I would call a very standard build in the game with a few modifications to, to adjust towards his opponent's play. Ah. Alright, so leave a comment below about what you think of this new format. I'm still testing it out compared to just casting games from tournament games and just going just voicing over the casters play and also if you have any suggestions for what other videos I should make just leave a comment below once again and you can follow me on Twitch <laughs> I can see it on the screen it's just everything's opposite so there's Twitch there's Twitch there's Twitter no nope. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube on that side. Please follow me and that'll help you be able to know when I do more videos and when I stream. As for streaming, I might stream a couple more times, but WCS is approaching near, so I am putting a lot of effort into that. And as a result, I will not be streaming a lot for the uh, future time being. Alright, that is all. Have a great night, everybody. Cheers.